Welcome, 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 everyone. My name is Mary Barnett, and this is Thomas Slaughter, and we would like to welcome you to um, the Facebook Live today talking about connecting faith in business. And I'm just so excited to have you. I was going to show this right here. Uh, we're talking about the Connecting Faith in Business Summit that's coming up. Uh, it's going to be on October 11th, which is coming up in three weeks. And Thomas is one of the speakers. Um, so say hi, Thomas. Hey, everyone. How's it going? How's your day going so far? <laughs> Make sure to put your questions or comments down below. And we would love if you are tuning in live to, uh, to share this broadcast with your friends and family, because we want to share how you can intersect faith and business um, and do it in a way to honor the Lord. And uh, we're just so excited. This whole conference is about that. And Thomas, again, is going to be talking about today some of the things that he's going to be sharing in more detail at the Faith and Business um, Summit. I keep calling it Faith-Based Small Business Summit that's on October 11th. So, yeah. um, so thank you, Thomas, for joining me today. I know you're a very busy guy. Um, and let me read your bio uh, so everybody knows how amazingly qualified you are. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be talking today about cybersecurity and how your faith-based organization, church, company um, can uh, protect itself. Right, Thomas? Exactly. Awesome. And I named this Honoring God Online and Offline uh, because that's really what we uh, intend on doing. And since you're an online cybersecurity expert, um, you can share some insights on that, too. So before I, I we go on, I just definitely need everybody to know how awesome you are. Um, so <laughs> Thomas has been in business management, marketing and IT services as IT service management and IT security management for over 13 years, building a progressive career from a research analyst to director before becoming a business and IT consultant nearly five years ago. He ran a two million a year cloud technology company. Wow. Managed a 60 million plus year business operations for a tire distribution company. Wow. And worked as an IT management, IT security consulting for one of the largest technology companies in the world prior to assuming the managing partner position for his company, which provides management, digital marketing, IT services, and consulting to entrepreneurs, nonprofits, faith-based organizations, and small uh, to medium-sized businesses. Wow. So if you need someone who knows their stuff to make sure you are safe, Thomas is the man uh, to call. I know Thomas and you and I have known each other for years, but I'm always yes. amazed at how much experience you have and how much you bring to the table. So this is so cool. I, your, the bio goes on. He, he is blessed to be speaking at, uh, he speaks at University of, of California, Riverside, Kelsey San Bernardino, uh, SOS Youth, Family MBK Christian Conferences. Uh, oh my goodness, San Diego College, City of Riverside. It goes on and on and on. He's been recognized <laughs> as a leader. Um, he has a Bachelor of Science in Business, business Administration. Wow, you have so much experience and so much credibility. Thank you so much for being a speaker at the upcoming Business Summit, Thomas. Well, thank you kindly. I really appreciate just being invited. And I'm just you know, very excited to be able to share my knowledge and just being able to take it from at the enterprise level and bring it down to small business entrepreneurs. And um, a main reason I actually started my company is because I saw that kind of gap. A lot of times, you know, um, small businesses or entrepreneurs, faith-based organizations, not to say they're taking advantage of, but they're not giving the best information a lot of times. And I'll give you a good case example. I met with a nonprofit probably a couple of years ago, and um, they were dealing with another organization, and they didn't realize that they had benefits for other, from a 501c3 to get certain technologies for free. And oh. as a result of that, they paid, I think, $230,000 for a software solution that they could have got for about I think $70,000. And that's when I realized, you know, it's not maybe the, I can't say 100% is maybe the fault of the organization because they only know what they know. And maybe it was right. the fault of the IT person or the company they deal with because they, they only know what they know. So where I come into this situation in place, I understand those kind of little um, differences between a 501c3 or people who's operating on a shoestring budget. And I know how to effectively implement a solution that will get them the cybersecurity protection, technology, or whatever you may have through the forms of technology to help secure their business and to help them more efficient and become more effective. And that's why I started my company was to be able to be that person that they could come to 
with enterprise knowledge to bring it down to a local level. That's wonderful. That's so wonderful. So somebody knows they have someone in the corner. So that brings me actually to my first um, first question. How can a faith-based nonprofit and small business use technology to improve their organization? Well, a big thing I've seen right now working with um, especially churches and other small nonprofits is that they are kind of doing things and kind of antiquated way or doing things kind of old school way. I'll give you a good case example. Let's think about QuickBooks. Um, right. As a nonprofit 501c3 organization, did you realize you could get QuickBooks for only $50 a year? That's online. Or you could get your QuickBooks desktop premiere or whatever you may have for only $50 a year. That's a huge savings. Wow. But I, Yes, it really is. Um, that's one thing. And of course, QuickBooks is about your finances and it streamlines it. Now, let's take it back to the cybersecurity element of it. Now, if you want to have your. Uh oh. Just Hold not. on. We lost Thomas. He's back. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. When you said about cybersecurity, I'm like, oh, no, he's been hacked. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're, we're all good. Okay. About cybersecurity, about that, yes? Yes. So from the elements of a cybersecurity standpoint, people or a lot of organizations or folks kind of misunderstand or don't have a full understanding of it. Cybersecurity is not just about somebody hacking you. It's also about um, data loss prevention. So say, for example, if your computer fails and where is your data? How is it stored? Where, where do you keep it? Can you get to it? And back, let's look at the financial records. If you have QuickBooks on your desktop, which I just seen with the nonprofit, they had QuickBooks on desktop. They had about seven years worth of records there. And if that computer was to fail, did they have a solution to restore that? So cybersecurity does play a little bit part of that with the cyber, um, was that um, data loss prevention element as well. Now, the other portion of it is, you know, a lot of nonprofits don't realize that they are just a vulnerable, not more vulnerable than um, small businesses or just larger businesses, because what do churches, nonprofits and folks with 501c3 kinds of designation all have in common? They all keep records on their donors. Would you think that information would be very valuable to somebody who would be interested in maybe scamming a donor? to yes. get in dollars from them. So it's imperative that you do put the certain things in place or mind you, if you are a nonprofit with a 501c3 designation, it's a lot of stuff you can get for free that you don't have to pay our very nominal costs that the big boys get to play with. Right. So um, for what takes for antivirus for your computers, for example, you can go to TechSoup and I'm giving you this um, what's called company TechSoup. You can definitely register with them Tech, and you can Tech yeah, soup. Yes, TechSoup. T I'm going to write that down below. Is it T-C-K or C-H-S-O-U-P? -S Go to the website, look at it, and look at all the free stuff or the very inexpensive stuff you can use or get with that designation. Now, let's not forget about our friends who are small businesses. They do have solutions for small businesses that's less expensive and that is tailored more specifically for your needs. For example, what about emails? You want to be able to have your emails protected. You want to have good email solutions. Well, Microsoft Office 365 does have a small business type solution for emails that's less expensive than the enterprise level. So the point of me kind of telling you this is that you can have the same level of security that a large enterprise has for a fraction of the cost. I apologize. I was trying to copy a link so I could tell everybody where to go. <laughs> okay, no problem at all. <laughs> You're like, we're being cyber attacked again. <laughs> Sorry. I think it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. Well, I love it. I think that um, I was actually sharing with you before we went live that um, yes. uh, that we, it's important that you find someone you can trust, right? Especially a, a, a brother in Christ that you know is going to have your back. And I was just reading my uh, Bible this morning on, in my um, devotional. Proverbs 24, 5, 6 came up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, Lord, thank you for giving me this verse. Because it's perfect for the talk <laughs> we're going to be doing today, which is a wise man is mightier than a strong man. A man of knowledge is more powerful than a strong man. So don't go to war without wise guidance. Victory depends on having many counselors. And that's the thing. When you're a small business, a nonprofit, a church, um, it's easy to feel vulnerable because you really, your mission isn't to work on a computer. 
your mission is really to save the flock and guide the flock and or, or work with as your nonprofit. And you're not focusing on that. So you need someone who is of wise counsel, who can direct you in the way to go, right? With the rod and the staff. Yes. Do you sometimes, Thomas, have to poke your clients and tell, or whack them on the head with that staff to tell them, wake up, you have to, I need to help you. You ever have to deal with that? Yeah, and um, from time to time, and sadly, the ones who don't listen, what ends up happening is something does happen that um, causes a breach or something does happen that causes data loss or something does happen that causes accounting issues or whatever it may be, and that's when they end up calling me. So don't be the one who's too prideful to reach out for counsel and guidance. You know, we only know what we know. I'm not, I'll tell you, I'm not a lawyer. Therefore, I have a business lawyer. Even though I know enough about business law, I still consult a lawyer. Right. Right. And and that is wise counsel that you need to make sure that you're covered on all bases and then you have someone right. who's checking on the things. Because sometimes we don't know what we don't know, right? Exactly. We don't. And innocently, we're like, you know, like we deal with Apple and Google a lot because we build apps. Yes. And, you know, sometimes we're helping our clients through the process and they just are like, are they just trying to make it hard? <laughs> and, and it seems like that, right? That that Apple and Google are, you know, making jump through hoops to, to get things verified and authentic, authenticity. But it's really for safety and security because people want to know, have confidence that they their information is safe. And you touched on something, Thomas, that I think a lot of people don't yes. think about. When you're raising money, you're really the shepherd. You're you're um, you know, you've, you've been given a great responsibility Correct. to guard that money and make sure it does what people have donated it for, right? That you're I mean, absolutely that not, um, is it shepherding the money? Is that the right term? Um, you could say, yeah, steward is probably more the more the, <laughs> yeah. the, the better term, but shepherding yeah. makes sense. What, what is the better term? A uh, steward. So you are steward. a steward of the finances. That's what I'm looking for. So, so Laura does make you the steward of the finances. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm sorry. I it's no been one of, we both had one of those days so far, right? Yeah, I know. I've been nonstop this morning. <laughs> so. Right? That's crazy. So, um, yeah. So you need to be a good steward, not only of the money that people give you, but steward of the information that is shared with yes. you. And you want to make sure to so people feel confident that that information is safe um, and give you that peace of mind that everything is cool. Okay. So let me ask you the next question, sure. um, which I have right here. Um, so uh, as we know, many faith-based organizations, small businesses and nonprofits have limited resources in terms of finance to invest in technologies that will help their business data with some things that they can do. Now, you mentioned earlier about the fact you can get QuickBooks for what you said, something per year, like so inexpensive, but tell me a little bit more about how it could be more affordable. Absolutely. So again, I'm going to just um, reference um, TechSoup. So if you are a 501c3 organization, please go to TechSoup and that's T-E-C-H-S-O-U-P.com. Now, not just taking anything away from other consultants, a lot of them won't tell you this because they don't know or there's no incentive to have them tell you this because you wouldn't buy their software through them. Some people just wants to know they definitely want you to buy through them because they do make a little bit of money. To me, I don't care about the elements of the money as far as, you know, you buying the software through me. I see the protection of the data, your members information more important, and we can do business on other things. So go to TechSoup and that's T-E-C-H-S-O-U-P dot com. You can get tons of software. You can get antivirus, even um, ADP. People know about ADP, right? Aren't they the ones who do the payroll? Right. They even are on there and they give discounts if you go through them as well. Microsoft, the new softwares, everything, um, Office, it's all on there and you can use it. And as long as you have that designation, it doesn't take much. You just need to send your IRS letter over there, send it to okay. them, do a couple of things. Once you do that, guess what? They're going to go ahead and give you the approval. Once you get the approval, you can go shopping. And they give you, I think they call it donations and they give typically about $200,000 in donations to the nonprofit if you register. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. So really your company is a resource that points people in the right direction of things that they can get more affordably. But then 
once they have those things, do you help them set them up or tell me a little bit more about how, what you do with that? Absolutely. So what we do is a lot of times we'll go in and give you a free, honest assessment. So our company, we do different type of assessments, IT assessments, um, IT security. We also do full business health checks where we look at your financials, your, um, you know, PHI, PII, and the, for those who are in the healthcare or dealing with county, we kind of help you walk through all that other stuff. And let me take a step back on that point. You know, for those who are looking to get grants from the county, if it be CAPS or if it be DHS or whatever it may be, that you get those quarter million dollar contracts a year or you get that million dollar contract a year, they are starting to now require that you have encrypted email to communicate back and forth. And you can get that encrypted email for free through Microsoft Office 65 if you properly register your company with TechSoup. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. And for small businesses, same thing. You can get these solutions pretty inexpensive. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money to actually get the solutions. A, a firewall will cost you maybe few hundred dollars, a good firewall, four or $500 to protect your environment. Your antivirus, you can get nice packs, packets, or um, as far as several licenses that will meet the needs that you need, as well as you can encrypt the, um, your computers and things like that for relatively expensive. And I know sometimes I'm talking in Greek. So if you do have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'll answer those questions for you. That's awesome. Well, speaking of, Bailey asked you questions. Um, well, we were just talking about um, protection technology investment and you were just sharing with that. So this is this is the question that I just asked you. But yes. but I also wanted to remind people that um, that the faith based business summit is coming up in three weeks yes. um, tomorrow and it's on October 11th. And Thomas will be there to answer questions in person. So that's so generous of you, Thomas. I know a lot of people pay you for your time, um, but coming out to this event, um, tell me a little bit more about what your impression, have you, I'm assuming you've been to this event before, Thomas. Actually, this is the first time I've been to the event. So. Oh, really? Oh my gosh, you will love it. It is so, <laughs> the Lord totally shows up. The Holy Spirit is there. It's like, has this sense of wonder. I don't know. It's just so amazing. Everyone there is like-minded faith, you know, believers, and they all put God in the center of their organization. And I wish I probably should have done my research better to share the story with you, but I've been a couple different years. Um, I actually uh, spoke for them, I think last year, um, yes. and I'm going to be on one of the panels as well this again this year. But Wonderful. anyways, um, there was a woman who received an award that had a construction company, and I am going to be so embarrassed. I don't remember her name or her company, but I was just so impressed with this. So they build the, um, I don't know if you call them the joists, but they're like foundational support for freeways. Oh, wow. And okay. they, they are sold all over the country, all over the world, actually. And to build a freeway, you have to put her supports down first. And then they That's pour the concrete and they put in the rot, you know, all this stuff, right? So her, so she is the foundational piece <laughs> of a freeway, right? And what yes. she does, she prints Bible scripture into the foundational supports that she sells. Oh, wow. And when people build freeways in rows, literally you are walking and driving on the word of, the, of God. That makes me I'm feel like, really safe. <laughs> I love it. I'm like, what? And so, and in her business, she actually um, built a room, a prayer room. Yes. That people can go in any time and read their Bible or meditate or pray, you know, and it's like it's an actual room inside her company that yes. people can go and just be with the Lord. Like she's that centered on her with her faith walk. I mean, I was just so impressed with that and so relieved that there is scripture literally in the foundation of our roads. Right. I, I love it. That that that's a blessing in itself. That that's just you know that, that literally honestly almost gives me chills when it brings tears to my eye to realize that you know yeah. when we're riding on those bridges and everything else that there's the spirit of God who's there with us at all yeah. times and just knowing that she's putting those in the foundation is just beautiful. Yeah, I literally have shivers right now just even talking about it. I was just so like it flooded over me like oh my gosh. I mean, it just gave me so much like confidence and knowing that I was around people who just wanted to glorify the Lord and what they do and wanted me to encourage me to do yes. it more myself. 
So um, maybe just a neat thing. So, I, anyways, I'm, I'm just I, 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 yeah. So there's. I'm, I love the story. I'm sorry. I said I love the story. That's just that's a great. I have to go. And I'm, I'm gonna have to preach that story. I'm gonna tell everybody about this. This, this is just something. This is the gospel that has to get out. Amen. But I will find out who it is and what it is exactly, so you can tell an accurate story. Okay, <laughs> it, wonderful. Yeah, it was I, the gist of it is that. But but anyway, that was. But there's gonna be people there from that are. Um, in fact, next week, uh, next yeah. Wednesday on October third, I believe could be the fourth. So whatever next Wednesday is. Um, <laughs> At the same time, 12 o'clock, I'm going to be interviewing two two more leaders, actually, at the same time. Um, Elaine um, Norland, who owns the Cone Zone, okay. and is also one of the keynote speakers, and Norm Bennett, who owns 24 Carrots. It's a catering company. Again, both faith-based businesses um, that run with the Lord as their SCF CEO. So um, I'm excited about uh, that as well. So we only have a few more minutes. Uh, Thomas, why don't you share with us? Um, and all our millions of viewers <laughs> and most people actually watch and replay. So it's okay if no one is watching now, which I think we'd have a couple, but, um, tell me about how you bring the Lord. How do you honor the Lord online and offline with your business? Oh, absolutely. So everything, definitely my business, what's that, um, vision and the goals and more says in essence, as far as how we operate is definitely by the baseline of what the scripture tells us. And all that we do when we do make a decision on and offline, we have to, you know, ask ourselves basically, is this the right thing in the walk of what God will want us to do? And we don't make a move. We don't make a decision without taking it to the Lord first. And this is my wife and I, when I say we, because my wife is my partner and she has her ministry as well. Women's ministry that goes to prisons and goes to um, different um, you know, women's shelter to to preach the gospel to them. And we will not make a decision in our business without taking it to God first. And we have taken so many leaps of faith, even me going on my own in my own business. It was taken to God first and we took that leap of faith and God has not failed us. Actually, we have you know, exponentially grown within a few months because we just said, hey, it's not us walking this walk alone. We're walking this walk with holding with the guidance of God. And I truly believe if you truly run your business by the word of God and have the faith that you'll be carried, you will succeed. That's awesome. That's awesome. It is he will glorify you're glorifying the Lord and he's gonna just mount blessings upon you. So I think that's awesome. I have shivers again, Thomas. <laughs> yes. Well I, I really on October 11th, seriously, when you come, you're going to hear these stories and you're like, no matter how much you feel like you, you know, have gone through this, somebody else has walked along the same path as you and stumbled and, and got back up and, and, you know, asked the Lord for guidance. And, you know, there's going to be stories of fails and wins and, you know, because, it, right, we're not guaranteed this life to be easy, right? But Correct. We're, we're, well, it's not easy, but, no. you know, God will definitely get you. And I just want one, one more point. It was very funny. So yes. um, I have a good friend of mine. I'll say his name, Eric Rourke, who um, is Rourke Financial Solutions. He's an accountability partner of mine that we meet once a month and we discuss, you know, our business and we basically hold each other accountable to be sure we execute certain things within that month. That's awesome. And it was so funny. I've known Eric for many years now, and I did not know how deep his faith was until I went out on my own and him and I had an accountability partner meeting. And I was saying, hey, you know, I'm just have to walk by God. And that's when he just opened up and to realize that God and the way he operates, you know, puts God at the center of his business and seeing his business grow in the way it has gave me so much encouragement and confidence. And you really don't know who actually is out there in this world who truly walks by the Lord and the message and who operates their business by the faith. You really don't until you reach out and talk to them. And I think the summit is going to give you a grand opportunity to go out there, meet these people and communicate with these people. And I was at the luncheon just last week, um, last Friday, and it was such the energy there, the, just the, the nature of doing business with faith minded people and with God minded people is a whole different level of doing business. And I'm just very blessed to have the opportunity to be able to be there with so many great minds and so many great people with so many great hearts. Uh, 
That's wonderful. I was so bummed to have to miss that event. I knew it would be a blessing to whoever was there. Though. Oh, it was and, definitely a blessing. And you know, my yeah. wife and I, we were so excited and happy after we left that luncheon. Oh, that's so great. I have shivers again, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I just, I, it's just, it's, it, it's not me. You know, all glory right. goes to, all, all glory goes to God. For sure, for sure. So everyone who's listening, um, please register. If you haven't registered yet, um, on this page down below, there's an event. You can, there's a quick little link. It's only $35 to attend. Um, it's a phenomenal event. I think check-in is it too. That's why I put that on the, on the ticker down below. Chickens at two. I believe the conference itself actually starts at three. But, yes. you know, there's networking and getting your coffee and getting your seat because, you know, you got to get your seat, get all set up. Right. Yes. When you go to a conference, there's like a little ritual. <laughs> Coat on the chair, put your stuff down. Right. <laughs> Say ritual every time. <laughs> Make sure you've seen everybody, you know, wave, wave, wave. Yes. Yeah. Um, so get there early enough so you can get the seat you want. Um, again, for $35 and it goes through the evening. There's um, food and beverages and um, and um, just sharing with, like you said, like-minded people that just give you the confidence that you're on the right path and that yes, you're not yes. alone and that, you know, hang in there. And, you know, again, wise counsel, wise counsel is there. And there's people from all different kinds of businesses. So it's a networking oppor opportunity as well. But uh, again, you'll be blessed on so many levels when you come. So make sure you register again. It's on October 11th. It's coming up in three weeks. And um, three, two, make three, three, three. <laughs> um, but next, yes, and we will be there. You and I, right? Is that the right one? Right there, you and me. Um, and I'm so excited to see you again because I think the last time I saw you was at a American Marketing Association meeting, right? Yeah, I think it was yeah, an AMA we meeting. That was about three years ago. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm still the president. I took on my second year as the president, so I'm hoping to get a lot of my peeps out there from from that organization to come as well. Um, but anyway, I'm, so I'm, I'm gonna have to come to one of the AMA meetings one day. Oh, I hope so. We actually have an event coming up on October 18th, and okay. so it's the week after this event, and it's on um, how to uh, build your business to a 250 million dollar and above agency. So. Oh, wow. I might have Hips in there. <laughs> it sounds good. Um, but anyway, so next week on this uh, this Bat Channel, this what do you remember that old Batman thing on the Bat Channel at the Bat Time, whatever. Um, so at, at twelve noon on October third, uh, we're gonna have Elaine Norlin and Norm Bennett um, talking about their businesses and how they've been blessed um, by the Lord, but also. Um, what they they are going to be bringing to the table at the event. Again, so many experts coming to share their their wisdom um, at the event on October 11th. So, Thomas, thank you. Was there anything else you wanted to say about uh, anything? Well, the only thing I could say, you definitely need to come to the event. It's only thirty five dollars to get such a wealth of knowledge that you basically would end up paying probably one of us consultants one hundred dollars for one hour of our time. <laughs> to come give you just a partial of it. So $35 right. is gonna get you half a day of good, solid business knowledge by faith-focused, faith-minded people who's gonna tell you right and is not gonna tell you wrong. Amen, that's exactly right. And the cool thing is this year, it's in the afternoon and the evening. So you can get almost a full day of work in, get everything you need to go. So when you go, you can completely unplug and just let, <laughs> knowledge enter into your brain and focus on that right i think we're always so frazzled like trying to get everything done but if you can get all your work done during the day get it done yes. you know unplug attend this event ask all the millions of questions you have take lots of notes i think you'll be blessed by it so um thank you thomas for taking your time to be on this today did you have fun i loved it i always love doing these interviews so it's always exciting and a blessing to be able to share knowledge to so many different people and some of them i do know and many of them i don't but just to have the capacity to use technology to communicate good knowledge is just awesome right and by using technology to honor god on and offline i think is um a real really important for people to know and the fact that you can help them save so much money which yes. allows them to do more things with their money, like bless other people. So absolutely, uh, I think that that's really cool. So make sure everybody checks out techsoup.com uh, yes. to learn more. And if you have any questions, please go to, I think it's siconsulting.com is what's your company's web address. Yes, that's siconsultinggroup.com. Let me put that in here. siconsultinggroup.com. 
Yes, dot com, or you can call our office at 909-332-3990. Say it one more time. 909-332-3990. All right, I'll put that in here so it'll sit on the okay. bottom of Facebook so people can see that. And if they're on the phone, they can click the call. So if any yeah. questions about cybersecurity, um, vulnerability for it from attacks, how to protect your data, your donors information, please call Thomas Slaughter. He will help you out as a man of God. He will take care of you. So, all right. So we're, mm -hmm. I think we're out of time. Um, yes. but thank you, Thomas. And I will definitely see you at three in three weeks on, uh, at the event. All right. Look forward to it. Thank you. All right. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye.